Welcome back. Alabama passed the nation's strictest abortion law this month. The Human Life Protection Act bans the procedure except when the mother's life is at risk. There's no exceptions for rape or incest. Alabama is one of a growing number of states tightening their laws. Many governors are signing what's known as heartbeat bills. They ban abortion after a doctor can detect a fetal heartbeat. This is often around six weeks before many women even know they're pregnant. To discuss this, I sat down with Jennifer Weiss-Wolf. She's an activist and co-founder of Period Equity. And we began the conversation by talking about the stigma surrounding this topic. When you say people who menstruate, you're talking about a huge chunk of the population. Right? This should be a no-brainer. It's, it's more than a huge chunk of the population. We're the majority. We are not a special interest group. So we've been talking about access to sanitary products, right? But this is about more than that. Yeah, this is about much more than that. I mean, access, ha there's an immediate need for access, and we're hearing that, you know, from activists who engage with a wide variety of populations, whether it is young students who don't have control of their own budgets or people who lack agency because they are incarcerated or they are experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. So the need is there. There's no doubt that that immediate need is, is a thing. But the bigger thing is, is this question of, of who we are and how we're reflected in our society and in the laws and the rules by which we live. How can it be that we are at half the population, slightly more than half the population, and this is a normal biological function that, you know, big secret makes, you know, the, the advance of the population yes. possible, and yet it is not or has not been in any way reflected in the laws by which we live. I mean, until now, now there's this movement underfoot to make this demand and say, wait a second, why is it that we are willing to provide certain products for people um, and not others? Why, are, why is it we're willing to create certain economic incentives like tax exemptions for, for products that we deem necessary and somehow we've left menstruation and menstrual products off the table. Mm -hmm. How did that come to be and why shouldn't we change it? And that's what we're doing, we're changing it. How did that come to be? You know, it's funny, I, I was talking about it recently with somebody and I said, you know, I think it's something like benign neglect, like nobody was talking about it and therefore, you know, I don't think there was some big nefarious campaign of how do we make menstruation more challenging or more problematic or more expensive. And their response was, wouldn't you call it deliberate indifference? And I thought, that's really good, deliberate indifference. Because benign, there's actually, it's not benign. It is part of this, you know, mm -hmm. all throughout history idea that our bodies are lesser, are, are, are a problem, are, you know, are, are something to be fixed. Right, or shameful. Um, or shameful, mm -hmm. right? So there's nothing benign about it, but again, Nobody was asking, and nobody who was in power had really either the knowledge base to run with it or an incentive to run with it. Um, you know, interestingly, President Obama was asked about this in 2016. He was asked about the tampon tax, sales tax on menstrual products. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, maybe that's something along the lines of maybe that's what happens when the people aren't fully represented by those at the decision-making table. And he's absolutely right. Um, people who menstruate have not been the majority um, and, and fully you know, reflected at decision-making tables. Yeah. But even as more and more women have come into office, there's still, like, would anyone really want to go out on a limb on menstruation or periods? You know, there's, that's a little bit of a burden yeah. uh, or a little bit of an obstacle, too. Isn't that but, crazy that that's going out on a limb, though? Um, well, you know, the, the, what I think is kind of incredible about how this movement has unfolded in really kind of rapid time in terms of being at least a policy agenda is it went pretty quickly from being out on a limb to something that has a lot of bipartisan support and something that is actually getting a lot of traction. Yeah. I mean, legislation has been passed across the country at the municipal level, at the state level, even at the federal level that now addresses either the affordability of menstruation or menstrual products, um, the accessibility of menstrual products, um, especially again for people who might have the hardest time accessing them. Mm -hmm. um, and that is really remarkable. So if you go into, your idea is, you know, if we go into a public bathroom and there are 
tampons available and it's out in the open and women don't have to sort of sneak and tuck it into their oh, arm that's, that's and whisper, <laughs> do you have X, Y, Z? Right. Um, that, that will lead to a, a broader comfort level. It'll lead to a revolution. A I mean, revolution. It, it's a menstrual revolution. It will be an entirely different way of deeming the normalcy of our bodies. Um, and, and you're right, it's not just the product and the use of the product and how the use of that product helps me at that moment or helps the person who needs it at that moment. Mm -hmm. It's what we're conveying to the world, those values. Speaking of other issues, speaking of broader issues, what we've been seeing recently is a wave of laws in states restricting access to abortions. Mm -hmm. And the um, thinking is that these laws are being presented now in the hopes that they will be challenged and work their way up to the Supreme Court and maybe we will see a serious challenge to Roe v. Wade. Right. Right. So that's part of the, the strategy. Do you see your campaign also fitting into this conversation? Yeah, it's really interesting um, and probably even a little complicated how menstruation and menstrual activism fits in because, um, you know, I wouldn't presume to know the politics of somebody who is arguing for menstrual access. And like I said, it's been really bipartisan in terms of its support and the interest in it. Um, so that's that's been a real asset. Mm -hmm. So that creates kind of an interesting tightrope to walk. But what I would say is that a kind of colossal misunderstanding, whether it's deliberate, um, you know, deliberate indifference or some sort of willful ranging to benign neglect um, of an understanding of how reproductive systems work, including obviously the full menstrual cycle, which is part of the entire story of pregnancy, um, is shocking, disturbing, um, overwhelming. So when I see descriptions um, or, or testimony by legislators of what it means to be six weeks pregnant, for example, when a lot of these bans are now you know, going into effect. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them don't understand that claiming six weeks worth of pregnancy, if you actually understand the menstrual cycle, means two weeks worth of knowing that a person is pregnant at best, at best. Um, because pregnancy is, uh, the, the clock starts ticking two weeks before conception, mm -hmm. um, at technically what's called the last menstrual period. So when somebody um, discovers they're pregnant, say, on the day of a missed period, they're actually four weeks pregnant mm -hmm. at that moment. They're not zero weeks pregnant. Um, so six weeks um, really occurs uh, two weeks after a person finds out they're, uh, of a pregnancy. Right. And that very basic bit of knowledge about menstruation and the menstrual cycle um, is perhaps lost in all of the, um, you know, all of the discourse and all of the throwing around of terms like six-week abortion ban, eight-week abortion ban, full abortion ban. For all intents and purposes, a full abortion ban, a six-week abortion ban, and an eight-week abortion ban have the exact same impact because there is so little time between a person knowing that they're pregnant, um, the way the menstrual cycle works, mm. and then their ability to access abortion. Thank you for watching our CBSN Originals. We are going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with the rest of the day's news. You're streaming CBSN, CBS News, always on.